Well, it's, it's going to come together, I trust. I'm not going to take up too much time. My dad is a very hard man. Uh, and I came downstairs one time, and like, you know, he always make us kids doing, doing work around the house. And he always said this thing that made us uh, get to work. It was the needs of the many. <laughs> and like, I hated that because it was so selfish. And then I found him downstairs one day, bawling his eyes out. Because he was watching this movie, The Rat of Kong. <laughs> and, uh... That was huge. <laughs> My dad has tear ducts. <laughs> so I started watching Star Trek. Wow. So I, I'm one of those who have uh, entered into the sciences because of that. Just graduated. Uh, master, or not masters, I'm, I'm, I'm a master of education now. A science teacher. You have, you're saying that about you have a master of what? Ma I'm a master of education. Master, so I have a master's degree in education as well. So we're kind of we're colleagues. <laughs> uh, this isn't my question, but as a colleague, would I be allowed to shake your hand? Probably, maybe. It's it kind of like a cookie thing. You get paid to be a Shake your hand, say, Polly. Yeah, you can shake my hand, but I, let me be clear, dude. Let me let me tell you a couple things. <laughs> Transformers, the movie, was directed by Michael Bay. I was I was the voice of Galvatron in the original Transformers. Well, that's film. what I was talking about. Michael sure. Bay refuses to offer me a job <laughs> doing a voice in his Transformer movie. <laughs> And Michael Bay happens to be my wife's cousin. <laughs> I am married to a wonderful, wonderful lady named Susan Bay Nemon. <laughs> and I don't know whether he's got this hostility towards his own family or whatever. <laughs> I think he's terribly competitive with Star Trek. So he doesn't want a Star Trek person working on his film. Now, uh, the other thing you, you, you talked about, about, uh, about the Wrath of Khan, uh, when, we, when we finished making the first Star Trek movie, and by the way, it was not called Star Trek Motion Picture 1, or Star Trek 1, it was called Star Trek The Motion Picture. There were no plans to make any sequels. <laughs> A lot of money was spent on special effects, and the ship looked great, and all these things. Anyway, the movie, uh, for me, was a disappointment. Uh, it was really not about us, and, and it, it didn't use the characters as successfully as we had done in the television series. When it was over, I thought, well, that's the end of it. We've done the Star Trek movie. And I thought we would finish with Star Trek, as we thought many times before we would finish with Star Trek. <laughs> anyway, uh, they came to me and said, we're going to make another Star Trek movie for a much smaller budget. The first, that first film cost about $45 million, which today is, is still not a lot of money for science fiction film, but that's what it cost, uh, $45 million. We're going to make one for about $12 or $13 million. I thought, wow, that's going to be kind of cheesy, isn't it? <laughs> and then they said to me, would you like to have a great death scene? And I really thought, if we're going to be ended, finish with Star Trek, and they're offering me this great death scene where I will go out a hero saving the ship and the crew, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Might as well go out in a blaze of glory. So I accepted the job. During the making of that film, I became concerned because I thought, wait a minute, this feels pretty good. <laughs> and I have decided I'm going to die at the end of this movie. <laughs> I have agreed to die at the end of this movie. I might have made a terrible mistake. <laughs> and on the day that we filmed the scene where Spock is to die, I was terribly, terribly anxious and frankly upset. I thought, this is, I'm, 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 uh, I'm in a bad spot here. We have to play the scene, and it may be my final scene ever with Star Trek. And I was uh, very touched by the way it was uh, written. And, and there's Bill Shepard on the outside of the, the thing that I'm enclosed in. And, and he's got his hands up to the thing. And I'm spot, spot. <laughs> 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 I have been always shall 
be your friend. And, uh, and uh, we, we did the scene, the movie was finished, and then they were invited to see a screening of it. So um, we went to the screening, my wife and I, and we sat and watched the film, and I thought, this is, this is a good movie, this is a good movie. And uh, we came to the moment where um, we're, on, we're on the bridge, and the ship is in trouble, and, and we're about to be destroyed. And Kirk calls down to the engine room and says, Scotty, I need warp speed in four minutes, or we're all dead. No response from Scotty. And we see Spock get up and head for the elevator. And I know where he's going. <laughs> <laughs> Spock goes down and gets into the, into the uh, chamber, which means his life, and he does whatever is necessary, and, uh, and then Kirk comes down, we play the death scene, Spock dies, and then we play the, the uh, memorial scene, the eulogy, where uh, uh, the, uh, Kirk says, uh, of all the souls I've met in my travels, his was the most human. <laughs> in this black tube that goes down a track and is shot out towards the planet, the Genesis planet. And that well, that's, that's the end of it. I'm seeing a tear running down my cheeks. And then, something that, I, that had not been planned, that the studio decided as an afterthought, because audiences that previous screen were going out too depressed about the death of Spock. They decided to do something about this, so they, they added some footage. Uh, suddenly the camera cuts to, to the Genesis planet surface and it goes through this leafy, foggy kind of movement, and there on the ground is Spock's tube intact. And I turned to my wife and I said, we're going to be, I called Paramount pretty soon. 